Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Well, praise the Lord, church. I love this place. I'm not just saying that. I feel the Holy Ghost here. And I'm so thankful to be a part of that. I feel the same spirit here I do in Dallas. Same spirit we do in Indiana, in New York. I've been all over the place. I feel that same spirit. And so I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful to be here with y'all. And um, I want to worship him today. This is all about Jesus, you understand? This is not about end time ministries. This is not about Dave Robbins. Not about Brother McGuire. Not about Brother Whitehead. This is about Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. Because I'm going to spend eternity with him someday. We're singing about heaven. I could teach a whole lesson here just on heaven. Because I, I want to go there someday. I want to be there. And I'm not, I'm not coming to church just because I need something else to do. I'm looking for another home someplace. And I know you guys are as well. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to be here with you. I want to thank your pastor, Brother McGuire, and your other pastor, Brother Whitehead. And you've got good leadership here. I've been in a lot of churches. I've been all over the place. Been overseas. Done all that. <laughs> And you can, I've been in places where you thought, you know, wow, this is, uh, this is a unique situation. But then I've also been in places where you know everybody's taken care of. You've got good leadership and everything's just, you got a great shepherd. And I feel that here. And man, when, if you've got a place like that, I would super glue myself to one of these pews and I'd, I'd be in this. You couldn't pry me out of here. Because I want to spend eternity with him and the, good, the place to do that. Is to be locked in with a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Because there's a lot of peer pressure nowadays to move somebody off of that. And if you've got somebody who will stand firm in the face of all the adversity and peer pressure, you better hold on to that with all you got. Because guess what? An influential man of God in your life can get you to heaven. Now, what's more important than that in your life? Your banker? No. Your, your, your high school principal? Your, uh, your boss? No. I'm going to stick with somebody who can get me to the right place on the other side. And that, that's, I feel that spirit here today, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you all. Have a seat. What are we doing here? Teaching prophecy. What are we doing? What am I trying to do? One of the things prophecy does is it builds your faith in the Word of God. The Word of God is the only book that has the words to eternal life. So I love teaching prophecy because I'm helping to build your faith in the Word of God. I'm going to be talking about prophecies that are 2,000 to 2,500 year old prophecies tonight. And I'm going to give you updated information that will show you how these things are coming to pass. Now, real quick, if you, I want to give you something. If you were not here last night, raise your hand. If you were not here last night, okay, Doug, you got your job cut out for you. Um, I want to give you one of these envelopes. So can we pass them out real quick? Just raise your hand and hold it up. This is very important. Do you all have envelopes already? Okay, good. Well, cool. So if you don't have an envelope, raise your hand. Okay, so Doug's going to help me out with that. It's very important. So when you get your envelope, there's some things we want to give you really quick. Number one, there's some things inside. One of the most important brochures, probably the most important brochure, my father-in-law, Urban Baxter, ever wrote was, what do you mean born again? We had so many people over the years that asked us, uh, that have given me so many different definitions of being born again. And, I, you know, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man's born again, you can't enter or see the kingdom of God, John 3. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. And I've had pastors, missionaries, evangelists, people from all different kinds of religions, oh, I'm born again, I'm saved. And I've asked them, I love asking people, what's your, give me your definition of being born again. You would not believe how many different definitions I've heard over the years of that. I'm sure your pastor has as well. So we wrote a brochure 40 plus years ago. What do you mean born again? And we've sent out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of probably millions of these into prisons everywhere. You can imagine all over the world. 
this track that's in here. What do you mean born again? So read that, and that is the, a very understandable um, definition of the born again plan of salvation. If you haven't done something, if you've missed part of that, make sure you get it done. This church, talk to the pastors, talk to Doug Norbell, and uh, they can help you get that done, even yet today. Um, number two, in the envelope, I'm going to be collecting these here in a little bit. I want your information. Because uh, if you look down there, there's an email, place to put your email, fill it out. Uh, we have a free e-newsletter we send out every Friday. It keeps you up to date on all of this stuff I'm going to be telling you about. I'm only going to be hitting the treetops today. My time is very limited. So we want to send out an e-newsletter to each and every one of you. Every Friday, our team puts that together. It's the top news articles from around the world on what's going on. And how that correlates to Bible prophecies, again, written at least 2,000 years ago. We're in the end time. I'm not guessing at that. It's very easy for me to prove that. And so you say, well, I don't, I've heard that for years. Yeah, I understand, but the prophecies haven't been clicking off like they are right now for years. When my, my father in law, Urban Baxter, he started back in, into this back in uh, the mid 60s, is when God started calling him into this. And he told me, he said, Dave, I would have to search. Newspapers and magazines, and this is prior to the internet. I'd have to search and search and search to try to find one or two things that might correlate with Bible prophecy. But over the last couple of years, me and him had great conversations, and he said, Now you can give me pretty much any major news source, and I can find something that has to do with prophecy in it. It's very easy. I do it every day on the radio. It's very easy for me to find things that correlate with Bible prophecy. So we want to keep you up to date. So in this, on the envelope, fill out your email. I do not, I'm not going to turn this into the United Nations so they can track you. So just relax. This is not the internet. This is not Facebook and all these others that are tracking you. No, no. This is End Time Ministries, and we want to just have your email. I mean, if I knew that the, the, the rapture was going to happen in the morning, would you like to get an email? Okay, so just, no, I don't, I'm not going to know that. But I'm just saying, if I know uh, uh, one of the significant prophecies that are coming just ahead of us, if I get some insider information, I get information from people all over the world. If I had some insider information, would you like to get that in the email? Yes. So if I don't have your email, that's not going to happen. And so I've got, we've got a data, a huge database of emails of people that we send the e-newsletter to. So I'd like to send that to you as well. And then um, there's a place here to subscribe to End Time Magazine. This, we're celebrating our 30th year of End Time Magazine. We started it in 91. It is the most widely read prophecy magazine in the world, to my knowledge. And our partners years ago subscribed. It's called the Renew America program. And every governor, every senator, uh, every all the House of Representatives, all of the, um, all the Sean Hannity, Sarah Palin. Uh, I was telling them last night, um, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, President Biden. Now it was President Trump, President Biden. All the movers and shakers in the news media, in the government, they all get in Time Magazine. I have a friend. I'll tell you real quickly. Uh, I have a friend. When all of the senators come in, they're voted in. Uh, they all have to have their office completely remodeled. Every one of them. It's like they just, I want a new office. So he goes in and he, he owns a business that remodels offices when senators come in. That's what he does. And he has seen there are, he's been to Israel with me twice. He has seen our magazine laying on the desk of these senators. And so I've gotten response from them, from articles that we've written and things like that. And so very neat. So if you'd like to be a part of End Time Magazine, you'd like to subscribe to that, there's a place on the envelope. If you'd like to partner with End Time, again, there's a place on the top. And then, but the most important thing on the envelope, in the bottom right-hand side, there's a place that says, I want to join an End Time Bible study. It's in, it's in red letters there in bold. That's the most important part of this entire conference. And... Because you may never remember a word I said. Hopefully you do, but you may not. But this is a long-term play for us. Um, we want to get you involved in a Bible study. Doug Norvell, he just stepped out, but he is a guy that works with me at End Time Ministries. He's a minister on staff with me. And he's starting a Bible study tomorrow night here at 6.30. We've, we've got these going on around the world, these Bible studies. And what he will do is he will take you through our Understand the End Time 1 through 14, and he's going to slow way down because I'm going to talk very fast. But Doug's going to slow way down. He's going to answer your questions and make sure you get it. 
because there are people in the world that are trying to manipulate you. As you sit here in this pew and as you live your life, there are people in the world that want to control every single thing you do. We feel it now at End Time Ministries that Facebook, they, that Facebook and YouTube, they've censored over 200 of our videos, my radio programs, because I talk about things that go against their narrative. And so they've just censored our programs. They've demonetized us on YouTube. Facebook has shadow banned a lot of our posts and things like that because they do not want you, the public, to know what we, a conservative religious ministry, are talking about. Right. So they've censored us like crazy. That's why we started the End of the Age Plus program. So you need to know about some of these things because in the end time, there are things that you absolutely should be a part of. You have to be a part of. And there are things that you absolutely cannot partake in because it's of eternal consequence. So Doug Norvell, standing back there in the back in the black suit and the, and the handsome young man in the blue, nice blue tie, um, he's going to be here tomorrow night at 6.30. It starts. Okay, well, I've got something planned. We'll cancel it. Okay, everybody relax a little bit. Sunday morning, I had a cup of Cuban coffee back here, and I'm wired. So just everybody relax a little bit, okay? I'm not teaching fear, and I'm, I'm going to teach you a message of faith and hope today. But... Join the Bible study. You will not regret it. Again, me and Doug have done hundreds of these, and it will show you where the modern nations are in the Bible. The United States, Great Britain, Germany, Russia, the European Union, they're all mentioned in, in the Bible 2,500 years ago. Yes. We're going to explain that to you in great detail. The, Holy, the revived Holy Roman Empire, the mark of the beast, the kingdom of God, all these different prophecies, the Antichrist, the false prophet. Every Monday night at 6.30, they'll join right over here in the next building. I guess it would be, what, north of us or east or somewhere. Anyway, it's right over here across the parking lot and uh, join Doug for a Bible study. So sign up. I want to join an end-time Bible study. It'll keep you up to date on what's going on. So I'll be collecting these here in a little bit. Very, very important. We've got 15 people from la 15 or 16 people from last night that have already joined the Bible study. We want to have more this morning. Very, very important. Okay, so I'll be collecting those here in just a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is, it's 10.25. I'm going to go till about 11. And then we're going to have a time of Q&A. It's going to be interactive. Anybody out there in the audience, raise your hand. You can ask me a question, and I'll do my best to answer it with the knowledge that I have. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you, I don't know. Um, but if you have a, a question about prophecy, you've always wondered. And this is always a good time because I get questions we do on, on the radio. And you never know. When you go on an open line on the radio, you never know what somebody's going to ask. And I always, it, it, it's funny because when we go on the radio, I've got a screener. And she's taking the calls and they'll say, yeah, I want to ask Dave a question on the rapture. Well, she'll put up a question on the rapture up there. And I'll say, hey, John from Oklahoma, uh, welcome to End of the Age. Uh, what's your question? And it's about uh, something about the mark of the beast, some real detailed thing. And I'm like, I thought that question was about the rapture. And they're like, no, nope, I wanted to ask this, but I told the screener that. So you never know what you're going to get. Well, so if you've got a question you've always wondered about, write it down, make sure you've got it in your mind. And when about 11, maybe a little after, we're going to go to, I'm going to get you out of here at 1130. So I'm going to go to 11, get your question ready, and then we'll do as many as we can until 1130. And then you guys can go eat barbecue. Okay? So, very important. But remember, number one, check the, I want to I wanna do the Bible study box. Check the box. I'm going to collect these here in just a little bit. Okay. Breaking prophetic fulfillments. Now, you might recognize some of these guys here. This is Pope Francis. This is Antonio Guterres, who's the Secretary General of the United Nations. This is our new president, President Biden. These are the movers and shakers in the world right now. This is uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu from Israel. And then, of course... The Russian uh, Vladimir Putin. Prime, then many of these are the movers and shakers on the planet. There are many more. I couldn't fit them all on this page, though. So I just brought to you five of them. But very important, uh, these individuals, some of them would love just to run every aspect of your life. And they're endeavoring to do that. Every aspect. How much electricity you use in your home. What type of products you use. How much food you consume. What you produce, everything, your bank account, who you pledge your allegiance to, these individuals are trying to control that. No matter what, I only have one individual I pledge my allegiance to, and that's Jesus Christ. It's not the United States government. 
And if, if they ever took one nation under God out of the pledge to a flag, I couldn't say that anymore. Yeah. I'm a patriot and I love my country. Yeah. But if they took that pledge out, I'm out. I'm done. I can't do that anymore. Because I only serve one individual, that's Jesus Christ. Right. And so, very important. But there are a lot of people that would like to move you off of that. To where you would not look to Jesus Christ. You look to the government in times of crisis. That's a lot of what this is all about. And so, we're going, you got to make sure that you know and understand the truth. Because there are some things in the end time you absolutely cannot do. It would be of an eternal consequence. So, here's a quick... Um, outline this is not near as detailed as the one we went through last night but this is the final seven years it starts with a Middle East peace agreement that's going to be between the Israelis and the Palestinians that starts the final seven years to the second coming of Jesus Christ and to the battle of Armageddon and during the first three and one half years the temple mount is going to be placed under a sharing arrangement the temple mount in Jerusalem Israel's going to rebuild their third temple they're going to resume sacrifices just like they did in the Old Testament and then that brings us to the three and a half year mark, halfway through that final seven years. Many things will happen. One of the main two things that will happen is that the Satan will be bound to the earth. Right now, he still has access to heaven, you understand. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren day and night. And you remember in the book of Job chapter 1, the Bible says the sons of God appeared before God to give an account and Satan was with them. He still had access to heaven. And uh, that's when the Lord said, hey, have you considered my servant Job? God actually brought up Job to Satan. Imagine that. So hopefully he doesn't bring my name up today. That would be, uh, but anyway, um, then you, that starts the final three. In one and a half years, the Antichrist will be revealed right there in the middle. Uh, many things happen. The two witnesses come on the scene right there in the middle, and they last for three and one half years. At, during the last three and one half years, well, that's, that's when the mark of the beast is doled out. That's where the Antichrist and the false prophet will be running the world government and the end time world religion. And that's when that three and one half years is going to be when the great tribulation is doled out. The great tribulation is not seven years. There's several places in the Bible that talked about, that tells us it's three and one half years. Very, very critical. Time, times, and half times, 42 months, 1260 days. The great tribulation is only the final three and one half years. The Antichrist is coming to power on a platform of peace during the first three and one half years. Final three and one half years is the wrath of Satan, not the wrath of God, and that's the great tribulation. Then at the end, at the end of this final seven year period, you have the, um, that's when the second coming occurs, and that's when the battle of Armageddon occurs. And then after that, the 1,000 year millennial reign, then the great white throne of judgment, and then off into eternity. So that's the, that's the um, a timeline, a very short, timeline for you. Now, what I wanted to do is kind of show you where we're at on this timeline that we talked about, many of us, last night. The One of the most recognizable things that is going on on the planet today that correlates with Bible prophecy, because many of the things have already happened. The modern nations that are supposed to be here during at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ, they were all established hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And Many of the prophecies have happened, but some of the things that are going on right now, where are we at? The Bible says just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's going to be a world government established. Well, we're way off into that. That, wasn't, that didn't start yesterday. We're at the culmination of that, you understand. There is a world government that's trying to control you. An, 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 over, a, a, um, an international entity, not our government. Our government would love to control you as well. And I'm not talking about Governor Abbott. I'm talking about an international government that's trying to control each and every one of you. The Bible says, John said, Revelation 13, 1 through 3, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Each one of these beasts represents a nation. You come to the Bible study, the first lesson is going to show that. Tomorrow night, 6.30. It's going to explain this in great detail. Each one of these beasts symbolizes a modern nation on the earth. Uh, just really quick, the four-headed leopard, that's Germany, the bear, that's Russia, the lion, that's Great Britain, the ten-horned kingdom is the European Union, the revived Holy Roman Empire, okay? So John said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads, ten horns, these symbolized nations again, and upon his heads ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, so I had the body of a bear, Germany is going to be involved. The feet as the feet of the leopard, Russia. Mouth as the mouth of the lion, Great Britain. 
all of these nations will be involved in this world governing body. And his feet, uh, let's see here, where are we at? And the dragon, Satan, gave him his power, seat, and great authority. Who's the driver behind the world government today? It's Satan. He's the driver. He's always been trying to establish a world empire so he could have his kingdom here on the earth. And remember, he told Jesus Christ, he said, I'll give you all these kingdoms if you just bow down and worship me. They're, they're mine to give. Because he's a godless world. So at the end of the day, the driver behind our world government, you say, why is the world government so corrupt? Why do they want to run my life? Why don't they just mind their own business? It's just backstabbing and underhanded deals and all this stuff. Why? They've got ulterior motives. Because Satan's the driver behind that. And in pledging allegiance to the Antichrist in the future, you will, in essence, be pledging allegiance to Satan himself. The Bible says that they will worship the dragon. So that's one thing you absolutely cannot do. You need to come to Bible study so you can understand about that in great detail. I'm only going to hit the, again, I'm hitting the treetops today. I've got about less than an hour. So I'm going to be really moving, but you need, the, the Bible study will slow way down. And make sure you get it. You'll get your questions answered. And it's really a great time. It's very informative. Don't get your information from the news. The news the news media today is bought and paid for years ago. You understand? There are five entities that run 90% of the news today. Five entities. And they're all liberal leading. So you wonder why is the news got this just this narratives that they put out. And they don't really line up with science or anything. And mainly not facts. Because they've got a narrative that they're pushing. There's agendas that they're trying to get across. They're bought and paid for. So somebody that's pushing an agenda, they'll tell the media, here's what we want you to say. It's not what really happened. It's here's what we want you to say. So don't get your news from the media. you got to make sure you get good conservative news sources. Most of my news that I get is from overseas. From Israel. Because they'll tell you what's going on here in the United States without, they don't have any inhibitions. They're just, here's what's going on in the White House. And so that's where I get a lot of my news sources from. There are some conservative ones that I follow, but you got to be very careful because there's a world government. Satan's behind all of this. The Bible says uh, one of his heads was wounded unto death and his deadly wounds was healed. That was the tearing down of the limb wall. You'll, again, you'll learn about that in the Bible study. And the Bible says this is very key. All the world wandered after the beast. It's a world governing body that will follow. These nations are a, a federalized group of nations. It's a world government. The world government's being formed right now. This is a 2,000-year-old prophecy, but it's happening as we speak. Now, this gentleman here, you say, well, how do you know? So the United Nations, you guys recognize that. That's not a great humanitarian organization that will just feed the poor after a tsunami or go in and, and help people in times of a, of a crisis. That's not what they were designed to do. This individual right here, on the heels of uh, World War II, 1945, the United Nations uh, was created. Their charter was signed. This individual right here, Al Jair Hiss, was a, he was the architect of the UN uh, charter that they function by right now. The United States has a constitution, but well, that's kind of like their constitution is their charter. Everything they do comes from that charter. And the individual, it was found out later, the architect of that charter, which was working with Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was in his back pocket. Ended up, they found out years later that he was a communist spy. So the current charter that the United Nations runs off of was written by a communist spy. It was created to be a communistic one world governing body. And you say, well, that's, surely that's changed by now. Not one word of that charter has ever changed. So the United Nations was not created to be this great humanitarian organization to bring peace on the world. That's what we were sold. But that's not the goal. The goal is to be a communistic one world governing body. You say, why are they trying to push socialism so much here in the United States? Because there's an agenda that's behind all of that. This world government is created to be a socialistic, communistic, one world governing body. And so Alger Hiss, I've been to the United Nations many times. And you can ask your guide. They've got a big, long line of all the secretary generals. He was the first acting secretary general. But his picture's not up there. And I'm like, well, where's Alger Hiss's picture? And they're like, Alger Hiss? Now, this is a guide at the United Nations. Alger Hiss? And I'm like, yeah, where's Alger Hiss was your first acting secretary general. Where's his picture? But Al 
Roger and his, I, we don't, they act like they don't know. They don't want you to know that he was, they don't want to bring that up. Maybe the guides, they haven't even told them. I used to work at, I used to, I did a Bible study up in New York. And a lady that worked at the United Nations, she came to the Bible study. I told her about all the stuff. She was like, hold on a minute, I worked there. I've been working there for years. I didn't know this was a world governing body. She worked there and didn't know. And so uh, she wanted to quit. And I'm like, well, 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 hold on, don't quit yet. But she just, she couldn't believe it. I, I said, it's not the, ran by the, the Antichrist just yet, but this is what they're endeavoring to do. So the United Nations is the seat of that world governing body prophesied 2,000 years ago. That's what they're trying to do, to go globally govern every planet on, or every person on the planet. Not just nations, but people. You say, well, how are they trying to do that? So this is one of the things you absolutely have to know about. This is the Sustainable Development Goals. You've probably read about it in the news and just skipped right over it. think, well, that doesn't apply to me. But it absolutely does apply to every single person in here. You say, well, not down here in Lake Water. We've kind of got our own community and they're not, they don't even care about us. Oh, yes, they do. Because these sustainable development goals are bleeding into our localities. I live in Wiley, Texas. Do you even know where Wiley's at? Okay, good. So it's coming down into my locality. They want to they govern how you, what you do with your land. They want to govern. It's all about climate change. They want to control the climate. God controls the climate, but they want to try. They're endeavoring to do these things. But they really don't care about the climate. They just want to govern your life. And so everything. They want to uh, they want to govern the migration of people around the earth. That's a lot of what these open borders are about. Now, we're, we're Texans. So we deal with what's going down here on the border more than somebody in Maine will. So what's happening down here? Well, anybody who believes in a world governing body doesn't want borders. They want to do away with the borders and do away with the nation state. And create one global state that answers to one world government. That's the goal. So you have a President Trump that comes along that doesn't believe in world government. He says, we need a wall. And then you have somebody else that comes along that says, I believe in a world government. We're not building a wall. See the difference? So the present administration is totally globalist. They believe in a world government. They're all bought into these. They're saying, no, no, we don't need a wall. We're going to, it's pretty much open borders. And that it's, you look at Europe, you look at many of these other nations that are just removing their borders, letting anybody come in. Because the United Nations wants to be able to manage that. It's called the Global Compact on Migration. They want to manage people like a, like a, a, a monopoly board or something. And so sustainable development is it's what it's all about. The goals, the, so the sustainable development goals were signed on to in 2015. The goals make up the international community's 15-year socialistic blueprint to govern every person on the planet. It's very, very important. And they're going to try to get this goal done. The plan is called the Transforming Our World by 2030. That's when they're going to try to get it done. And we're in 29, 2021. So they got nine years left to transform the world. That's their goal. they got a pretty lofty goal. And so this is world government. That I say it's the socialistic um, blueprint because they say that it's only going to be possible if wealth is redistributed, redistributed. The redistribution of wealth is one of the major planks of socialism. I told you the United States, the United States or United Nations is absolutely socialistic or communistic. So they believe that we know best, this, this ruling elite, and that we should redistribute the wealth from developed nations to underdeveloped nations to equal out the playing field. If you remember um, Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto, it was all about the haves and the have-nots. That's why we have the conflict in society. So we need to equal out the playing field. The problem is, is they make the richer poorer is what they do. They don't, get a, they don't bring the poor up to make them middle class or upper middle class. They just make the richer poorer, and they want to get everybody poor. Look at the socialist nations that are running right now. Everybody gets poor, and then the government gets filthy rich. That's what happens because when they redistribute the wealth, when we, re when we redistribute the wealth to some of these underdeveloped nations, it all goes to the government. They don't give it to the people. And so when all the money started going into Iran's coffers when they signed the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal, the money went to the Iranian government. The people are still in abject poverty. And that's what happens. Redistribution of wealth. That's what these sustainable development goals are all about. We, uh, the Obama administration signed the United States onto these, by the way back in 2015. 
the world government uh, wants to control, again, every aspect of every person's life. They want to control what our societies produce, what they, how they consume goods and services. They want to control our businesses. They're, it's getting that detail. They're trying to, to I'll, move, I'll talk about capitalism here in a minute, what, the way they want to do away with that. But they're trying to, to control each and every aspect of all of our lives. So the United Nations world government, they're trying to establish a master plan to govern the Earth's citizens. You hear about this sustainable development all the time. They're, they're constantly preaching and preaching and preaching that. And so in true socialistic form, they want to redistribute the wealth of the world so everybody's considered equal. They want to control the production and consumption of every person. They're striving to achieve universal health care. You've heard about that. Here's the problem. If I am the government and I'm in control of your health care, then I'm giving, if I'm giving you a service, then I can withhold the service if you don't bow down to my edicts. Now, this is where we can get. And that's why they want universal, universal. Let me just give you free things, free things. You've heard about it. And but it's, there's always a million strings tied to that. And so if I, can get, if I can give you free things and get you dependent upon me, then I can withhold that service if you don't bow down to my edicts. This is exactly where we're headed with the Antichrist. Uh, they also want to um, control the climate, which is crazy. Human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change, is an absolute hoax. But yet it's preached by the United Nations and people who are globalists all over the world that humans, because we are um, emitting so much carbon emissions, that we are causing the earth to heat up to the point where it's going to burn up. And if we don't stop that and move off of the oil and gas industry... Then we're going to burn the plant up. There's not going to be. We're not, it's not sustainable. We're, our our great, great grandkids aren't going to have anything to eat. They're going to. We're going to burn the planet up. So we need to move into electric cars and uh, windmills and all these different things. Uh, President Biden's talking about it all the time. It's an absolute hoax. They don't really care about the. They're just creating a perpetual fear mode to keep you in fear mode. So you'll just say, "Well, in the name of security, I'll do whatever you want me to do." That's what's going on in our world, folks. And so um, they want to manage our cities and, and infrastructure. You've heard about uh, Joe Biden's wanting to spend two point some tri with, a, with a T trillion dollars on our infrastructure and all these different things. And then they want to govern the oceans and they want to govern land usage along with ecosystems. Whether you can put a tank on your property, they want to govern everything. And it's crazy. So this is world government. This is what their this is their lofty goal. So this is the sustainable development goals. This is world government. Now I talked to you last night about Antonio Guterres. He was one of the people on the front page there. That he he is mad. He's upset. He's the Secretary General of the United Nations right now. He's upset because he says that the today's multilateralism of world government lacks the scale, ambition, and teeth. And some of the instruments that do have teeth show little or no appetite to bite. What he, what's he talking about when he's talking about teeth? He's talking about enforcement methods. The, the international community, the, the United Nations, wants to be able to dictate to you. Right now, they'll make suggestions. And some of the nations will say, no, we're not going to do that. But they don't like it. He, he's upset about that. He wants to have enforcement methods that they can absolutely just say, here's what the world needs to do, and you do it, or suffer the consequences. And so this is where the Bible says this is where the world government's going to be headed. They want to, he says we need a, a new networked, inclusive, effective world government, multilateralism, based on the enduring values of the United Nations Charter. That's why I wanted to explain to you who was the architect of the UN Charter. A communist spy. But yet the, the current Secretary General says that we need a new global governance that's based on the enduring values of this lovable, communistic United Nations Charter. That's something we all want here in America, right? Absolutely not. I don't want that. That's communism. We do not want that here. But the current, where, where's the United Nations located? Anybody know? It's in New York. It's not in Europe. It's not in China, which is where it should be. But it's located right up here in New York. Rockefeller donated the land the United Nations is sitting on right now because he was a globalist. 
And so this is all be, this is all happening right now. This is the fulfillment of a 2,000 year old Bible prophecy in Revelation 13. World government. You're hearing about it in the news every day. All the major news sources talk about global warming and climate change and fear mode and we're going to burn up the planet. That's a hoax. God is the one who's in control of the, of the climate, not us. And it, through all of the models, if you look back through the, the history of the, um, the how the earth has heated and cooled, and they say carbon emissions have um, driven the, the temperature rise, but they've actually found out that uh, the heat over time, heat has risen first, then CO2 has started to rise, or the carbon emissions have started to rise, sometimes 800 years behind. It's the opposite of the narrative that the United Nations is pushing. And yet, it's, it, it just all boils down to world government. But most people, that's why they want to stamp out our voice on the internet and on the radio. We've had radio programs um, cut off halfway through. And people start calling in saying, hey, they did, this radio station just cut, your, um, just cut your program off. I have one that I was talking about a subject, a, a controversial subject in, uh, up in South Bend, which is a huge area for us. And the, the, the pastor friend of mine, I'll be in his church here in just a few weeks. He said, he called the station. He said, hey, I'm listening to that program. Why'd you cut it off? Oh, we're having technical difficulties. At 4 o'clock, our program's over at 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock straight up, bing, it started playing again like normal. And he, he was like, I know they cut your program. And because it went right off and then right at straight up 4 o'clock, it takes off again. He said, he said, I know they cut your program. That's happened to us many times. Because they do not want you, the American public, to know the false narratives that are being pushed. So when you have conservative, uh, Ben Shapiro, Dennis Prager, all those guys, they're all being censored. All the conservatives, you've heard about it. They do not want you being educated. They want you watching football and listening to whatever and getting your news from the, the major uh, MSNBC and, and uh, CNN and all these different ones that are pushing the false narrative. The news is not what it used to be. So you've got to search and you've got to make sure you have conservative sources that will tell you the truth in the end time so you can know about this stuff. Because they're never going to talk to you about global governance and the United Nations and all this stuff. And the reason I'm telling you about this today is because the Bible says that the Antichrist will eventually usurp authority over this global governing system. He's going to come, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's only got three and a half years left. So he's not going to take three and a half years to establish a world government. He's going to usurp authority over an already fully functioning world governing body and a fully functioning global numbering system, which is being set up now. And then he's going to use those to coerce people to, to bow down to his edicts. That's, this is where we're headed. And this is a two, these are 2,000-year-old these are, uh, Bible prophecy. So the COVID-19 response, this is a global wake-up call. This is the UN, what the UN Secretary General, the current UN Secretary General, has said. That political leaders around the world need to heed this wake-up call, in other words, this crisis that's been created, and we need to come together to address the world fragilities and to strengthen our capacity for world governance. So what he's saying is, is that in, the, in light of this crisis, now this is not global warming, climate change, or all the other crises that have been made up. This is the COVID-19 situation, he's, and he's saying, hey, what we ought to do, instead of turning to Jesus Christ and asking him to help us with all this mess, we need everybody. We need to strengthen our global governance. That's what he's all about, world government. And we need to give, and, and we also, I should have had this in bold red, we need to give teeth or enforcement methods to these multilateral institutions and draw, that draw power from the unity and solidarity to overcome the biggest test of our times. He is all about world government. Then the World Economic Forum. The COVID-19 crisis, they have said, have wreaked havoc on societies and economies and have dealt with a major setback to achieving what? The, what, what did I say was the socialistic blueprint to govern the planet? Well, the World Economic Forum says, is, hey, this has dealt the setback to our 2030 agenda and the Paris Climate Agreement, which is the Sustainable Development Goals. It all, every, all of this leads back to those Sustainable Development Goals. They've got a goal for all of you. There's 17 of them, and they want to manage all of your lives. And so what they're saying is the Sustainable Development Goals that the Impact Summit said that, hey, we're realizing a great reset. You've heard about the Great Reset, that we need to use this Great Reset or this um, 
COVID-19 crisis as a great reset to get everybody focused on the other side of this. We need to, everybody needs to look to the world government for their answers. It's saying realizing a great, great reset for the sustainable development, the goals. That's, that's the socialistic blueprint to govern each of you. That's what this is all leading to. Um, and this is, what is it? World government forming now. One more thing I wanted to mention real quick. The Council for Inclusive Capitalism. This is a group of business leaders that got together and they're working with Pope Francis to change capitalism into inclusive capitalism. And you say, well, what are they talking about? Well, they're all leading to, number one, about the, look right here in the yellow, it says, in, um, or council, these council members make actionable commitments aligned with the World Economic Forum. The International Business Council's pillars for sustainable value creation, people, planet, principles, and governments of prosperity, and that advance the United Nations. What is it again? The Sustainable Development Goals. Everything leads back to these goals. This movement is a historic collaboration of guardians. They call these CEOs that are involved the guardians. And the Bible talks about, really quick, the Bible talks about a union of politics and religion in the end time. The Antichrist and the false prophet, which will be the leader of the world religion in the end time. They're going to be teamed up together. It's going to be a, a marriage of politics and religion. Well, the sustainable development goals are the politics, but they want to get the religion involved. So what happened? This Council for Inclusive Capitalism, the second paragraph says the movement is a historic collaboration of the guardians, the CEOs, and the global leaders working with the moral guidance of Pope Francis to harness the power of business for good. So they want, to, they want to change capitalism and they want to move towards implementing these sustainable development goals, but they know they need the religions of the world on board. So they get one of the most recognizable religious figures on the planet who's involved in this world religious system and getting having all these big interfaith meetings to get all the religions of the world on board. And they said, hey, with the moral leadership of Pope Francis, we're going to get this thing across the finish line. So what is it? It's the prophesied union of politics and religion. How do you know he's trying to establish a global religious system? Well, there's a, there is, in, back in 2019, I could give you many things. I've only chose this. But there was a document on human fraternity and world peace living together. And it was signed by the Grand Imam uh, Ahmed Al-Taib. And it was considered to be the most important Imam in Sunni Islam. And Pope Francis, they both signed it. You say, well, how do you know there, it, that it talks about a world governing body? Well, there were two statements in the document that was signed. Now listen to this very, very closely. Because this is why I said, if you can find a man of God who will not move off of biblical principles, you better super glue yourself to that guy because he's going to get you to heaven. Because there's a lot of people I know of evangelicals that are moving into this stuff. I could call their name right now and you'd all know them. They're saying, yes, we want to be a part of that. I know one of them that actually sent a document, a group of individuals that sent their own document to the Pope to be signed just like this. But what does this document say? Two things. The pluralism... And, the, you know, the Bible says there's only one way to be saved. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ was not interfaith. Jesus Christ was, I'm the only way. I'm it. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ, period. That's it. And so, but this document said the pluralism and diversity of religions is willed by God. So the Bible's narrative is Jesus Christ is the only way. But this says that, hey, all the different religions in the world, that's willed by God. That is not a true statement. That's what was in this document. I pulled these straight from the document. The second one says that, therefore, the fact that people are forced to adhere to a certain religion or culture must be rejected. As to the imposition of a cultural way to the life of others that do not accept. In other words, I shouldn't, I'm considered an extremist. If I say that there's only one way to get to heaven, I'm religiously an extremist or religiously exclusive. 
And they're saying that in this document that, you, no, no, you shouldn't be like that. You should not say you're the only, you have the only way to heaven. The only way I say that is because I believe in the Bible. I don't have the way to heaven. Jesus Christ does. And so it's very important. But these documents that are being put out, they're moving off of that narrative and saying, no. But there's the, all the religions of the world, they all worship the same spirit being. They just call him different things. And they'll all have an opportunity to be saved. You cannot, that's, I'm telling you, you can't get pulled into this. And there are very influential people that are trying to suck the entire world into this. And so it's very important. This is something, you, again, when I said we, we put out a, um, the e-newsletter, this keeps you up to date on these things. And it lets you know, hey, this is something I cannot be a part of. I absolutely cannot be a part of this. So the world religion, where is it found? Revelation 13, 11, and 12. The Bible says, I heard another beast. The first beast in Revelation 13 is the world government and the Antichrist. The second beast. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. So he's going he's to be a religious figure. He's going the lamb of the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's Jesus Christ. Well, this is not him. This is said, this was going to have two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan. And the Bible says that he exercises all the power of the world government, the first beast before him, and he causes the world. This is going to be the goal. This is the union of politics and religion. The Bible says he causes, he exercises all the power of the first beast, the world government and the Antichrist, and he causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the Antichrist and the world government. That's the goal of the world religious system right now. Because that's why I said you're going to have, you've got the Pope and different individuals that are on board with this Council for Inclusive Capitalism to move people off of the capitalistic system more into a socialistic system. We did that to America, they would destroy America. I'm just going to tell you. Look, look at all the other nations that have implemented socialism and communism. They did, it's just total. Venezuela, all these other different nations just, just destroyed them. It would destroy us as well. You give the American people freedom and this place just takes off. And you put the squash down on them and give them regulation, 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 and the economy just comes to a grinding halt. We've seen that happen over the last few years. And so capitalism is a good thing. Capitalism helps you become successful so you can give more to your church. <laughs> Everybody wake back up. I'm bringing you back in here. So the, the um, Pope Francis in his encyclical that he did in 2015, this was just prior to the signing of the Sustainable Development Goals. He advocated a world governing body. In his encyclical, most encyclicals are written to uh, cardinals, bishops, archbishops around the world of the Catholic Church. This encyclical was written to every person on the planet from the Pope. And what he said we need to do is he said, hey, give, he's talking about global warming and climate change. But then he says, given the situation, it is essential to devise stronger and more efficiently organized international institutions, institutions of global governance, with functionaries who are appointed fairly by agreement among national governments and empowered to impose sanctions, okay, not just on nations, but on individuals, impose sanctions, he said, as Benedict XVI has affirmed to, in continuity, so here it is, he said, this is in continuity with the social teaching of the church, and he said, remember the union of politics and religion I'm talking about. He says to manage the, this is what we want to do, because of the global warming climate change scare, this fear tactics, we want to manage the global economy, revive economies hit by the crisis, avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and greater imbalances that would result to bring about a, a more, it, here it is. So to fight the climate change, he said we need to bring about integral and timely disarmament. What's that got to do with climate change? There's a goal, there's agendas being pushed here. Food security, peace, to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration, we're all going to turn to Jesus Christ, right? It's not what he says. He says, for all of that, for all of this, there is an urgent need of a true world political authority, a world government, as my predecessor, Blessed John 23, indicated some years ago. They do not want you looking to a deity, the religions of the world, to a deity in times of crisis. They do not want that. They want you looking to the world government. That's why China is trying to stamp out Christian Christianity now. They're going into their churches 
and they're taking down pictures of Jesus, they're taking down crosses, anything that has to do with the Christian religion, and they're putting up pictures of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, and the late leader of China, Mao Zedong, who killed millions of Chinese. They're hanging them in their churches. What are they doing? Because in times of crisis, they do not want them looking to a religious figure. They want them looking to the government. That's what all this is all about, everybody. And this is exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. There's going to be a union of politics and religion that's going to be established. So the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is nothing more than the United Nations socialistic blueprint of global governance. Migration, climate change, uh, this, the COVID-19 situation, the Great Reset, the move away from cash onto a, uh, a digital system, giving everybody their own unique identification number, all that, all of it, goes back to the Sustainable Development Goals. There's 17 goals, and, and they've got 169 uh, targets under the different goals, and this is what they're trying to hit. They've got a goal for each and every one of us. This is the, we're watching the ongoing fulfillment of a 2,000-year-old Bible prophecy of world government and supported by the world religion. This is happening right now. Let me see if I can get to one more here real quick. I'll do one more and then we'll go to the Q&A. Make sure you get your questions ready. So, the, the mark of the beast. This is the next one. The, the, these things are happening right now. In uh, Revelation 13, 16 through 17, the Bible says, And he causes all, both small and rich, great and poor, uh, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark uh, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Everybody's going to be given their own unique identification number, and without, without that, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. You understand? And so, this is the global identification system there is forming right now. How? Well, Medium.com reported that in May of 2016, at the United Nations headquarters in New York, the inaugural, uh, one more, uh, Bill, the inaugural ID 2020 summit brought together 400 people, major tech uh, people, uh, Bill Gates was involved in it, all these people, Microsoft, major 400 people to discuss how to do what? To provide a unique digital identity to every person on the planet. 2,000 year old prophecy. Everybody's going to give them, be given their own unique identification number, including the one and a half billion living um, without any form of unrecognized identification. Secure ID News has said that ID 2020, which is the United Nations effort to number every human being, and ID 40, which is the World Bank's initiative to number every human being, their goal is to, their aim is to bring illegal binding digital IDs to all of the world's citizens. Now, remember I told you everything goes back to the sustainable development goals? Listen to this. The purpose of ID 2020 is to nurture public-private partnerships that can create an opportunity for emerging technology to connect with organizations that are working towards what? The UN Sustainable Development Goals. It all goes back to world government and that's 16.9, that's one of them. There's 17, this is 16, target 9. Legal identity for all. And like ID 2020, the Sustainable Development Goals 16.9 also drives ID 40, which is the World Bank's initiative, to number every human being. So the Sustainable Development Goals, again, one final time, that's the United Nations Socialistic Blueprint for World Government, everybody. Now, again, it's 11.05. So I know we're going to want to have a good time at Q&A. I could keep going. I've got more information on the global numbering system. I've got information on the uh, the Six Trumpet War that's coming. I talked about that last night. It happens either just before or just after the um, peace agreement that's going to be signed that starts the final seven years. But we're right on the cusp of this thing, you understand. And then uh, I've got information about that, how many people believe we're already in World War III. It just hasn't escalated to the point where there's going to be mass casualties. There have been casualties, but... The, we're not there yet. But I, uh, one of the things I follow, we talked about it last night. The Bible says that this war will emanate from the Euphrates River region. That's Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. 
One of the things that has been going for the last 40 plus years that will not go away. In other words, the Syrian civil war went away. The uh, ISIS, uh, President Trump went in there and took care of pretty much just about all of that. You haven't heard of ISIS in a long time. Every once in a while there's an article about, hey, there's this little uprising, but nothing like it was. It was taking the Middle East by storm there for a while. You remember, you've seen the, the assassinations and things that they were doing. That's not happening now. So some of these things have come and gone, ebbs and flows of the Middle East situation. The one thing that has never went away, that's Iran from the late 70s. Iran and Israel and the United States. Iran's trying to, they're the number one state sponsor of terrorism on the planet right now. They're trying to, to get a nuclear bomb. What do you think they'd want to do with that? Just sit on it? No. Oh, they're going to want to annihilate Israel and they're going to want to fire a bunch of them at the United States. And so Israel knows that. Israel's never going to allow that to happen. They would go to war tomorrow morning if they thought nu uh, Iran had a nuclear weapon. So that's one of the things that I've seen, having followed this stuff for years now, that has absolutely never went away, and it's not going to go away. I've got articles documenting that, that there are many people believe World War III started back then, and that we could possibly be in World War III now. It just hasn't escalated to the point like a World War II yet. Uh, will it be Iran and Israel? I can't tell you that for sure. That's pure that's speculation on my part. But if you understand the geopolitical situation in the Middle East, you can tell that, that there's something, that it's just a tinderbox. And there's a bunch of people standing around with matches. It's the most volatile place on the planet right now. And it could be the Iran situation. So there are many people believe that we're already in World War III. That's the Sixth Trumpet War. Uh, and then I, I've got information on the um, Israel-Palestinian peace agreement. There are people that would like to start that back up. The, you understand President Trump, um, he proposed a, a huge peace initiative, peace to prosperity in the Middle East. And he was going to try to help out the Palestinians and many people. And it ended up falling, going, being pulled off the table for right now because... The United Arab Emirates approached Israel and said, hey, if you, he was going to allow them to annex a lot of the, of the West Bank. And they said, if you will not do that, if you'll pull that off the table, then we will we'll sign a document of normalization with between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. And so they did pull that off the table for right now. It's been postponed. And so, uh, but these are efforts to move towards the Abraham Accords could lead to this peace agreement that starts the final seven years, you understand and so um, I've got documentation for all of this stuff. I'm not going to take time to do it because I want to try to get you out here at 1130, which is about 20 minutes. So I want to have some time for a good q and A. I I know that it, when it comes time for this, everybody's like scratching their head. I had 10 questions last night. Now I can't think of one of them right now. Um, but hopefully somebody will ask a question that will, that will uh, jar your memory and bring it back. Before we do that, I want to collect the envelopes. We're going to take an offering, and we want to help uh, offset some of the finances of the, the cost of the meeting, uh, hotel rooms, things like that. I had to have a place to sleep last night. I didn't want to sleep in the van, so I stayed in a hotel room. So uh, if you would like, again, I'm going to be collecting the envelopes. Fill your information out. Turn it in. We're going to take up an offering. Let me say a word of prayer real quick. I thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I truly thank you for all of this information you've given us. You didn't leave us wandering around aimlessly in a fog. But throughout the end time, you give us prophecies that we can understand and instruct others. And I thank you so much for that. We love you, Lord. We ask you to bless this offering in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's take up the offering. Uh, you can, you know, sign up for um, Help End Time Ministries out. Whatever you need to do, subscribe to the magazine. Number one, check the box. I want to attend the Bible study that's starting here at 6.30 tomorrow night. You will, it is so awesome. You'll love it. It will really enrich your life, and it'll help you. I'm hitting the treetops today. This is very, very, very detailed. And um, I'm going to go ahead and talk while they're taking up the offering. So if you want to pass some envelopes in, that'd be great. Okay. So some of the things out there on the table that we have, you've seen the table. Uh, we've got a lot of DVDs and different things. Uh, for sale. These are things that you say, well, man, there's no way I, could, I I haven't studied this stuff for years. I have. God called me into this years ago, and I had a father-in-law that mentored me. Okay, so that's the only way I got to the point where I could rattle this stuff off. This doesn't come from 
you know, I know a lot of people, they just, you know, they need help. I did as well in the beginning. What I did, I cut my teeth on these Bible studies. And I started teaching Bible studies, and that forced me to learn it. Plus, I went on vacations and spent every Thanksgiving. I did everything with my father and I lived in his back pocket for years. That's what helped get me up to speed really quick. The DVDs out there, everybody <coughs> here has a sphere of influence. Everybody. Most of them I will never meet. Brother McGuire, Brother Whitehead, Doug Morrell, we may never meet any of them. So you, God has chosen you, you, as the ambassador to reach your family, your neighbors, your co-workers. God's chosen you as an ambassador of his kingdom to go into that and talk to them. And you say, well, they're not, they're not interested in this kind of stuff. Well, it, I, you can pose some really easy questions. Did you know the United States has mentioned the Bible? Most people will say, no. I got a DVD I want to show you. Boom. Pop in modern nations in the Bible. Did you know about the global numbering system that's being established? The Mark of the Beast. All these different, there's tons of stuff out there. My father-in-law just finished a comprehensive um, series on the book of Revelation. And it is a commentary. It's his life's last big project. He finished the project. He finished volume two just a few weeks before he passed in November. And so he kept saying, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. He had me do most of the radio and television programs for the last probably close to a year before he passed. He said, I'll never get this project done. I've got to get this done. He finished it a few weeks before he passed. So we've got that out there. Volume one, volume two. It comes with a book. It is awesome. There's nothing like it on the planet. And so these are some of the things that you can pick up, some of the prophecies you didn't understand. What about this peace agreement you're talking about? There's DVDs on that out there. So stop by. My wife's out there at the table. Doug's wife, Tina, is out there. And uh, purchase some of that stuff and take it home with you. Because you need to be able to explain your friends, family, and your sphere of influence about this stuff. You can actually hold your own Bible study in your house. And pop in a DVD, show it. We've got outlines and quizzes you can follow. It's so cool. And because think about it. Think about what you've learned today. And I just hit you in about 40 minutes here. About the world government. Those DVDs go into great detail. I can't, there's no way I can go into all the detail this morning. So you need to know about these different things. It's very, very critical because, again, there's some things you should do in the end times, and there's some things you absolutely cannot participate in. You say, well, I know it'll never affect me. The Bible says everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will worship this individual. It's Revelation chapter 13. So, number one, beyond all of this, if I don't get a chance to say it at the end of the Q&A, beyond all the prophecies, you say, I don't understand any of the prophecies you talk about. That's fine. Make sure you're ready to go. Be ready to meet the Lord when that trumpet sounds. That, that's number one. Yes. That supersedes everything. Right. Get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I talked about the Lamb's Book of Life last night. I want my name on the front page at the top of that. <laughs> and when the Lord opens that book, Dave Robbins, come be with me. I want him knowing my name. I want to know him. And I want that relationship. The Bible says there are some that will stand before the Lord someday. And he's going to say, I, I don't know you. I don't want that being me. I want him to know me. And now he's, the Bible says the hairs of your head are numbered. Mine's pretty easy to number. And so it's getting easier all the time. But I want him knowing me. I don't want him to say, I, I, I don't know you. I don't want that. And so I want my name in that book. I want him, every time he opens a book, he's like, okay, pass the neighbor. Okay. Because he already knows my name's there. I'm having my name in that book no matter what. So. The prophecies are one of the best ways that you can use to build people's faith in the Word of God. I've just given you yeah, these current events going on right now to show you how these prophecies are coming to pass. What's that do? There's no other book in the world I can do that with other than the Bible. You understand? There's no religious book. There's no self-help book. None of that. It's the Bible. So I'm building your faith in the Bible. These prophecies are written, and I've used current events to show you how they're coming to pass right now. And if I can get, you can get your friends, family, your spirit's influence, your sphere of influence involved in that, then when you say, well, look at what the Bible says about salvation, they're already believed. This is the only book for me to look to. And then you've got it. And you're preparing people for eternity. That's the goal of all of this. Be ready for the Lord's soon return. 
The gospel of the kingdom of God is that God's coming back before very long to establish his kingdom here on the earth. Let me show you how to be a part of that. So my message today is not prophecy. Believe it or not, this is a prophecy conference. But my message today is be ready to go. That's absolutely number one. It supersedes everything. Be ready to meet the Lord when he returns very soon. So, okay, here we go. Uh, Q&A. Doug Norvell, he works with me at End Time Ministries. And very, very talented individual. And he, he knows this material. He'll be here tomorrow night. He's got a roving microphone. So if you've got a question, you can raise your hand. And he's going to come to you. And uh, he can help you. Right here, Doug, in the front. And we'll do this till about 11.30, and then you can all go eat. So we're going to keep your questions short, and I'll keep my answers short. Okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. On the rapture, is it yeah. before or after all of them? Okay. I knew, I knew we'd go there. Every, every time we've ever done one of these, because I give you a timeline. Okay, go back. Bill, can you go back to the timeline in the very front? Just bing, 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 all the way back. There we go, right there. Okay. So the rapture, is it before or after Armageddon? So what happens? Here's the, here's the timeline. I don't have my pointer, but try to follow me here. The, you've got the uh, Middle East Peace Agreement in the beginning, the final seven years. The Great Tribulation is the last three and a half years. Then at the last line, that's where the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ occur. The, the, the rapture will occur. The battle of Armageddon will already be engaged when the rapture occurs. I'll put, I don't have my phone on me, but the um, if you understand what happens at the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation chapter 16 is a very good picture of the vials of the wrath of God. When you get down to verse 15, it says, um, it says, give me the give me 1615, Doug. It says, um, give me the really really quick. Yeah, I don't have my phone on me. So it says, behold, I come as a thief. Yeah, that's what I was missing. Behold, I come as a thief. That's the rapture. He only comes as a thief one time. This is after the sixth vial of the wrath of God. The sixth vial is when the uh, river Euphrates is dried up to make way for the kings of the east to come down against Jerusalem at the battle of Armageddon. They're coming down, and the Bible says in, in 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest they walk naked and they see his shame. That's the rapture. It's the last minute warning. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. But it's after the sixth vial of the wrath of God. So we will be here, but the Bible says we're not appointed under the wrath of God. So the wrath of God is not poured out upon us. You say, well, how is that possible? Number one, the wrath of God is going to be poured out at the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon is centralized in Israel. The wrath of God is not poured out all over the world. The hailstones are not going to fall in America. It's going to fall on the armies that have come down against Israel to battle. A lot of people think the Battle of Armageddon is all over the world. It's not. The Sixth Trumpet War could spread out around the world. Two separate wars, but the Battle of Armageddon. The Sixth Trumpet War happens during the first, uh, at least prior to the first year and one half years. The Battle of Armageddon happens at the very end. And so we believe that the rapture happens after the Battle of Armageddon has been engaged. But then after that, the Bible says, the next verse is, and he gathered them together into a place called the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So it happens right there at when the battle is engaged, that's when the rapture happens. How, another real way that I know that is that the Bible says that at the Battle of Armageddon, that he will come back and plant his feet upon the Mount of Olives. I gave the scenario last night. They come down the Jordan Valley, starts in a plain Megiddo, come down the Jordan Valley, up into Jerusalem. It culminates in the Kidron Valley between the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives. The Bible says that's when the Lord will come back and plant his feet upon the Mount of Olives. And he comes back with his saints. The book of Jude says it comes with ten thousands of his saints. We're the armies of heaven. The rapture has occurred. You say, well, the rapture has occurred seven years prior to that. No. Revelation chapter 19, the, ra the rapture and the second coming are one simultaneous event. It's not two separate events. The Bible sa says many times at his appearing, not appearing is plural, but singular, his appearing. The Lord's coming back one time in the near future. What happens at the time of the rapture, the Bible says that he will come in the clouds. Send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet to gather his elect. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb in the sky, and we go straight with him to fight on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. It's one simultaneous event. It's not, there's not seven years separating that. So I said all that to say this. To answer your question, the rapture occurs right there 
in the midst of the Battle of Armageddon because we come back with him to fight on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. In Joel chapter 2, the Bible says that there's an army, this army at the Battle of Armageddon will go forth and fight on behalf of Israel and that if they're thrust through with the sword, they won't be hurt. That's us because we've got immortal bodies. Imagine somebody shooting you and you're just like, no, I'm coming. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says this is the whole, all of this happens one simultaneous time. Another way I can show you that it happens at the same time, let me read you a scripture, that it's one simultaneous event. Because a lot of people get hung up on this, that the rapture and the second coming are different. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the apostle Paul said, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him. So a lot of people say, no, that's two different, two different events. It happens two different times. The coming of our Lord and our gathering together unto him, the rapture. And But the Apostle Paul, he was teaching against the doctrine of eminency. And he says, that you be, sheen, yet that you be uh, not so shaken in mind or be troubled neither by word or by spirit, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. He says, the second coming and our gathering together unto him is that day in Christ. Not those days, that day. And then a second time, he said, um, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except there comes a falling away first, the man of sin is revealed. So he specifically says twice, that day. Our gathering together in him and his second coming. Because it's one simultaneous event. It happens after the battle of Armageddon has been engaged. At the, at the end, where'd you go here? Uh, yeah, okay, hey, great, man. Check it out, he's with me. Bill, br bring my timeline back up, Bill. Wow, you're ahead of me, that's awesome. I could have been reading on that instead of the phone. Uh, so it happens right here at the end of that final seven year period, which is the end of the Great Tribulation. Does that answer your question? Good. Next. Uh, I have a question on um, after the thousand year reign of Christ, mm -hmm. the Bible says that Satan will be released. Is that the battle of Armageddon? Or if it's not, which battle is that? Right. So. The Battle of Armageddon happens just here in the very near future from us, at the end of this final seven-year period. Once a peace agreement signed between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and it has the five characteristics of the prophesied peace agreement, that starts a final seven-year period. This is just in a, a very short period of time from where we're at right now. At the end of that, that's the Battle of Armageddon. So within seven to ten years, maybe within 20 years or so, I'm speculating because I don't know when the peace agreement is going to be signed. When that peace agreement is signed, I can stand in this pulpit and say we've got about seven years left. That's scripture. At the, then, at the end of this timeline here, this is the end of the age we are talking about in Matthew 24. Then goes the 1,000 year millennial reign beyond that. At the end of that, the Bible says Satan is bound that whole 1,000 year period. At the end, he is loosed for a short period of time. He deceives the nations to bring them back down against Israel to battle. Now imagine this. You lived under a thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ and the saints. Satan's loosed again and boom, nations are deceived and they're going to come down and think they can conquer God again. It's crazy, but it, I, I, I just scratched my head over that. I never ever understood that. But he, that Satan will deceive them, but the Bible says there's not a war at that time. Because God just simply consumes them with a fire from heaven. It, it, there's no more war. The battle of Armageddon, that's the last war on and then after that, there's no war. God just consumes those armies, and the earth is prepared for the great white throne judgment. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, right back here. Do you think one of our political leaders could be the Antichrist? Right. So um, here in the United States, no. Because the – now, I know they, some of them act like it, <laughs> but that's a big difference. Scripturally, the Bible tells us that the Antichrist will come from Europe. The revived Holy Roman Empire. Um, very important. The, the ten horns. Real, uh, real, quick, real, real quick proof. Uh, the ten horns on the ten horn beast in Daniel chapter 7. That beast symbolizes a... Doug's going to teach a whole lesson on the reborn Holy Roman Empire. The current European Union. It's the fifth empire in Nebuchadnezzar's vision in Daniel 2. So it's the ten horn beast in Daniel 7. Those ten horns are nations that will come up out of Europe in the end time and form an alliance with the Antichrist. The Bible says three of those nations, three of those horns will be uprooted and one little horn will come up among them. That little horn is the Antichrist. 
the Ten Horn Union, the Ten Horn Beast, is the current European Union or the revived Holy Roman Empire. Now, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't have time to prove all of that historically and everything, but just take my word for it. It's the current European Union, and the Bible says that that's where the Antichrist will emerge from, not the United States. Again, I know there are some presidents that you have thought, this guy is the Antichrist. No, e even though, even to the point where a lot of people were saying that President Trump would be, because he had this peace agreement that many of the things he proposed went along with the prophesied peace agreement in the Bible up between the Israelis and the Palestinians. But I kept telling people on the radio, it's not President Trump because he has to come from the European Union. There is some, a political leader on earth alive today that will eventually come up and take the reins of a world governing body. He's going to be involved in getting that peace agreement signed, but we will not know who he is. The Bible specifically says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that he's, re he's revealed halfway through this final seven-year period at an event called the Abomination of Desolation, which is when he stands in a rebuilt temple, claims to be God, calls us to sacrifice and deceased. That's when I'll be able to go on the radio and say, so-and-so is the Antichrist, everybody. At this point, I can't do that. But no, not from the United States. He's a political leader from the European Union. You think you're censored right now? Wait till that happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. God will make a way for us to... Yeah. We'd ask you a question. Uh, I'm very confused. Because you talked about two wars, the seven, seven trumpet war. Mm -hmm. You talked about Ezekiel 37 war. There's another split theory about Psalm 83. Mm -hmm. Psalm 83 war, which mm -hmm. I think that's probably the seven trumpet war. Okay. Because you've got the uh, uh, King of the East coming in, which we talked about uh, starting at the end of the seven year period. destroys all the Islamic countries because after later in the Bible, none of the Islamic countries are ever mentioned. Jordan, Syria, all of these countries just suddenly disappear in the latter parts of the Bible. And one of the reasons the uh, uh, kings of the East, the Russian, the Turks, uh, and the Chinese come to attack Israel is he says the types come to get them for their spoils. For their spoils because Israel becomes a very wealthy country. Mm -hmm. It's not now. Mm -hmm. It's getting there, but it's not as wealthy as, as God told us Israel would be. It would be one of the most wealthiest and most powerful countries in the world. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been there. It's never been there. Okay. But it's getting there. And I, the studies I've done kind of indicate if you have these Psalm 83 war where God, where Israel destroys and takes over all the Middle East oil, all the Middle Eastern countries, and suddenly it becomes the most powerful, most wealthiest country in the Middle East. Then that gives momentum for the Chinese, the Russians, and the Turks to come down and take it with those spoils like you talked about in the Bible. What, what was the question? I was wondering if you made with the Psalm 83 war. Yeah, so the, it is possible, in my opinion, that the Psalm 83 war has already happened. That could be a past war, in my opinion. Two future wars are the sixth trumpet war, Revelation 9, verse 13 through 21, which the Bible says when that war happens, that it will kill one-third of the world's population. Then there's the battle of Armageddon at the end of the final seven years. And the Bible says that in Ezekiel chapter, so Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 is the battle of Armageddon. Same exact war. Uh, so there are two future wars, in my opinion, prophesied in the Bible, two nuclear wars, the sixth trumpet war, and the Battle of Armageddon. The Bible actually does talk about Middle Eastern nations at the Battle of Armageddon because it talks about Persia and it talks about Togomar, which is Turkey, coming in, down against Israel to battle. But Ezekiel 33, Ezekiel, or, um, the Psalm 83 war, if it is the case that that war is a future war, it, in my opinion, it would happen at the Battle of Armageddon. I don't believe there are three wars that are coming in the near future. I believe that it's either occurred or it would be the Battle of Armageddon. It, that's my opinion, and from Scripture. Okay? Thank you. Doug. Dave, I know one other thing that you've talked to me about is in that uh, Psalm 83 war, it specifically mentions that Jordan is plotting against Israel there. And we know from Daniel 11 uh, that Jordan will not be a part of the Antichrist or its one world government. Right. It says specifically they won't. And that's one of the reasons why we feel like that war is not uh, going to be involved in that right. battle of Armageddon. Again, 
Yeah, in my opinion, it has either already occurred, uh, and that, but we know about the two future wars that are prophesied in Scripture. Again, that's in our opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that um, actual time or prophecy time? Okay. Uh, it is what? The timeline here? Yeah, yeah. So that would be, the Bible says in Daniel 9, 27, that the Antichrist will confirm the covenant with many for a seven-year period. And so this is that, and this would be actual time. Uh, once the peace agreement signed, we know we've got seven years left. The Bible then talks about several times where this last three and one half years is a three and one half year period, a literal 42 months, 1260 days. It's a literal three and a half years. So that's why we teach that that, that is a literal seven year period because you, you have to understand. And again, you'll hear about this in the Bible study uh, from Doug. I don't have time to do it now, but you'll hear about Daniel's 70, 70 week prophecy. It's, it's 490 years. It's 77 year periods. And we're going to, well, I'll prove that to you uh, in the DVD that you go through. But it, it, it shows you that these are literal seven year periods. They're not just a, this is not a, you know, these are literal seven year periods. That This is going to be seven years specifically. Um, so when you're talking about a prophecy time or literal time, I guess I don't understand that. Okay, no, this is literal. Yeah, seven years. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just a question about the vaccine passports. And yeah. I've heard that Israel is pretty gun ho on the vaccine passport. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, so um, it appears that. Uh, so, in, in other words, my opinion, like, is it the mark of the beast or something, or should we take it, or... Get, 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 I'm sorry? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So that's what it is. It's, it's not the mark of the beast at this point. It's one of the precursors that is pointing us. It's societal conditioning, the, the mask mandates, the, the churches only being, being able to meet in groups of ten and things like that. They, they went from just trying to, to uh, help us with the COVID situation to a very controlling type situation. And the Great Reset, the, the um, World Economic Forum that has been talked, they've been talking about, hey, let's use this COVID-19 situation as the Great Reset of all of our economies and everything. So they've moved off of really trying to help people to a very controlling, uh, con a, a societal conditioning type situation. That's the way I view the, the COVID passports. Thankfully, there are states here in the United States that have said, we're not gonna do that, Florida. Texas, some of the others, they're bucking against it. Um, at the end of the day, at this point, would I take, uh, would I do the COVID passport if I got a vaccine? I'm not planning on taking the vaccine, number one. I don't want to take it. I don't like medicine, number one, but I, I don't want to take the COVID vaccine. Um, so I'm not planning on being involved in the COVID, uh, the whole COVID situation period. I had COVID back in early February. COVID is what took my father-in-law. He had some other issues and things, but the COVID, um, the vaccine passport, I see it as a precursor because the Bible says they're going to give you an, a number in your right hand or in your forehead, a mark, and uh, we're not there yet. And number, and number two, the Antichrist is not going to come on the scene until halfway through this final seven-year period. You can't build out the mark of the beast until the beast comes. He's not even here yet. So these are societal conditions, things leading as precursors to the eventual mark of the beast. A great question, by the way. So I'm a little bit over time. Uh, one more, Doug. Over here, yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. Here in the old age, falling to money. And uh, the illusion plan of money, number one. And uh, I know it's on the diagram, but great see All the countries are. Germany, Russia, I believe. But I did just see an eagle in there. So right. where's that? Okay, the, the first question I'm not sure I totally understand. Where's the money coming from? From what money? To finance the world government. Okay, yeah, yeah. So there are well, very wealthy individuals, plus all the nations of the world in the United Nations, they pay dues to the United Nations as well. And so they would love to have a global tax and different things like that. Uh, Janet Yellen, who was the former leader of the Federal Reserve, she works with President Biden now. She's looking for a, a, a global tax for everybody. But 
There are nations that pay dues to the United Nations. That's where a lot of the funding comes from, from a lot of this. And one of the things that they did with the Sustainable Development Goals and uh, the Paris Climate Agreement, you've heard of that. All of that was commitments by the nations to give billions and hundreds of billions of dollars to the United Nations to fund some of these things, even though it's total propaganda. That's where a lot of their funding comes from, is commitments from nations uh, that are funding this. You and me are funding a lot of this. That's where a lot of the money comes from. Second question again. Where are they? Where's the eagle? So where's the eagle? Okay, great. So in Daniel 7, and this will be the last one, and then what we'll do, if I can't get to your question, you can either, it's going to be hard to catch me afterwards. You can, the Bible studies, Doug can help answer a lot of them. Uh, our, our emails uh, at End Time Ministries, you can call us there. And if you'll email me, email Doug. We'll, get, we'll answer your questions and get it back to you. Okay, the United States. In Daniel chapter 7, there's a lion with eagle's wings, a bear, a four-headed leopard, and a ten-horned beast. The lion is Great Britain. The Bible tells us in Daniel 17, or Daniel chapter 7, verse 17 and 23, that these beasts symbolize nations and the leaders of those nations, the kings. So the, uh, that, and that these nations will be on the earth at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the lion is Great Britain. The symbol of Great Britain is a lion. The United States is the eagle's wings. The Bible says that I beheld till the eagle's wings were plucked out of the lion made to stand upon the feet of a man, and a man's heart was given, given to it. So, the eagle's wings are the United States. The four-headed leopard is Germany. The bear, you've heard of the Russian bear. And then the Ten Horn Kingdom is the current European Union. 650 years later, John writes the book of Revelation. In Revelation 13, he says, hey, I saw this beast come up out of the sea. One singular beast, not separate beast like Daniel 7, but this is one federalized beast. And it had the body of the leopard, Germany, the feet of the bear, Russia, the mouth of the lion, Great Britain, and the ten horns of the ten horn kingdom, the European Union. They're all going to be involved in the world government. The, the eagle's wings are not mentioned there. Where else are they mentioned in the prophecy of the Bible? Jump back one chapter to Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says that um, there's going to be a war in heaven. Satan is going to lose the battle. He's going to be bound to the earth. The Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because Satan comes down to you having great wrath. This happens halfway through this final seven-year period. That's what is the catalyst that launches us into the Great Tribulation, this final three and one half years. That's the wrath of Satan on the earth. The Bible says at that time that Satan goes forth to make war against the woman, which is in that chapter, Israel, the woman with 12 stars around her head, is Israel, and those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Who, who's that? That's the church. So he's going to make war against Israel and the church during that final three and one half years. But the Bible says in Revelation 12, 14, this is the key, that the woman is carried away on the wings of a great eagle. This is the verse right here. The woman's this final three and one half. Oh, so the, this is the final three, three and one half years on the timeline. So it's our opinion that the United States will not be fully engaged with the world government in the end time. That beast I just talked to you about was the world government. And that we will stand with and protect Israel during that final three and one half year period. I just read an article this morning that said Israel is losing our stance as the global leader and it's shifting overseas. This is exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. The Antichrist is going to come out of Europe, not out of the United States. And who's Israel's best ally on the planet by far? The United States. So in our opinion, we will not be part of the world governing body. We will be stand with and protect Israel during that final three and one half years. That's the that's where the eagles wings are. That's the United States. Okay, so one more. Do, let's do one more right here, real quick, Doug. I can do these all afternoon. I love this stuff. Um, so we'll do one more, and then we'll be done, guys. And again, my email is d robbins at endtime.com. D r o b b i n s at endtime.com. Doug's is d no right here in the blue. Yeah, I understand that the lion stands. The wings of blood, the lion stands. What is the symbolism of the man's heart being given to the lion that stands like a man? Sure. Actually, the eagle's wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the eagle's wings stand. So, a man's heart was given to it. So, when you think about the United States of America, the eagle's wings. <clears throat> Most other countries that go in, let's say, and bomb another country, let's say in a wartime scenario. Many times, they'll go in and just annihilate the place, and then they'll say... I don't even dare you. 
See you later. You're, you're, we annihilate you. Yes, we conquered you. What does the United States do? We will go in and bomb a place and turn right around and rebuild it and give them tons of money and give them humanitarian aid. I mean, come on. So there's a man's heart has been given to this nation. We, we, you realize how many other nations that we fund our tax dollars try to help people out? We, I mean, it is unreal. We send billions and billions of dollars overseas to help underdeveloped nations because we realize they're in a third world countries. Many of them, we, we're helping fund in underdeveloped nations, funding people to get a bowl of rice every day. I mean, just billions and billions of dollars of every year. Where other countries just say, I'm sorry, you know, you're underdeveloped, that's your problem. So, the Bible says that, now not Great Britain, we were pulled out of that, but the eagle's wings were made to stand upon the feet as a man, or, or another symbol we have is Uncle Sam, and a man's heart was given to it. So, uh, compassion, and just uh, willing to show that, hey, we have a heart. In our opinion, it's when the United States will say, hey, we've just annihilated you, but here's some money, rebuild. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, but there's something about the United States where we have compassion and um, want, want to help people around the world. So that in our opinion, that's what that would mean. So great question though. I've been doing some studying, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so um, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank Pastor McGuire and Pastor Whitehead for having us out here. I know, like I said last night, I know it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. That's why I do so much to push the Bible studies that will be held here with Doug. If I was having a Bible study, I might pull up a chair, sit down, and we just have a conversation. It's a lot. I've got so, my time is like, but I've got so much to cover. There are hundreds of hours. We've got over 200 hours of DVDs explaining this stuff that I've tried to go through in a couple, two or three hours here this weekend. It's very detailed. What we like to do, what I can take a radio program and do is spend you know, on one topic and spend an hour and give you all the history and the facts and the whole thing. I can't do all of that in the short amount of time. And so we ought to make these prophecy conferences go for a week next time, Brother McGuire. Uh, so, <laughs> but we, I can cover a lot of stuff and go a lot slower. But very, very important. The Bible study starting at 6.30 here tomorrow night. We'll slow way down. It's a casual atmosphere. And you can take your time and go through this material. It's so enriching to your life because you're watching the news right now and you're being fed a, fed a bill of goods. And a lot of people just think, well, okay, now the world's going to burn up. Climate change is real. Blah, blah, blah. Climate change is real. But the climate's been changing every day since God created this old world. It's going to be cool this afternoon, but it might be 90 tomorrow. The climate's been changing. It's not because I drive an F-150 pickup that is doing that. It's propaganda, you understand? And so there's agendas being pushed. And so you need to make sure you understand about these things. We'll go through when it started, how it's escalated to this point, give you the history behind all this stuff. It's very documented. You'll love the Bible studies. And that's why we push them. Every conference we do, we sign up Bible studies like this because I want you to get it and understand it so you can teach it to your friends, family, and your sphere of influence. So, let's all stand. I want to say God bless you all. I'm happy to meet you. I'm happy to be here. And um, if you don't follow End Time Ministries, we're on uh, 770 AM. I don't know if you can get that out here in Dallas. We're on the internet. Go to endtime.com. We're on Daystar, TCT, many different uh, television networks. And it's very, very important that you understand this stuff. The Bible says that during the time of the Antichrist, that they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. So these prophecies are meant to be understood. Why? So we can just say, well, hey, I've got a head full of knowledge. That's awesome. No. Not so I can win a debate. No. So I can instruct others and lead them to Christ and prepare them for eternity. That's the goal. Be ready to go. Okay? So with that said, I want to thank the, the uh, Pastor McGuire and Pastor Whitehead for having us here this last evening and this morning. And I'm going to ask Pastor uh, Whitehead to come and dismiss us in prayer. And again, thank you all for your support and love and the passing of my father-in-law. We had just, the support has been unbelievable and uh, so thankful for that. Thank you. We love you. I think people recognize that End Time Ministries love them. 
Uh, truly, when we say end time ministries, we mean the ministry part. And so, um, God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Brother Ryan. Wow, we are just overwhelmed with information, but hopefully it has pointed out. I told Brother Doug Norvell what I appreciated about Brother Robbins is he pointed people to the fact that we've got to be right with God. Yeah. And that we've got to make sure that our that heaven will be our next home. And that's that's what we're all about. That's what Brother Doug Norvell and his class, him and his wonderful wife, Sister Tina, are going to be teaching you on Monday night. So I won't belabor the point, but I would like to pray and ask God's blessings. We do have church around here at 6 o'clock this evening. Pastor McGuire will be preaching to us. We're going to come have a great time in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. We ask you to go with us, this knowledge that we have been given today. Apply it to our hearts, God, and push us toward you. We want to be right with you. We want our names to be in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we honor you and glorify your name because all of this is to give praise and honor to you and glory to you. We want to make sure that our church is filled with people and our families will go to heaven from this place and we'll give you honor and glory. And everybody say amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for being here. You are dismissed in the fear of the Lord.